In this lesson, we are looking at an introduction to cells. It's the first part of Unit 1. We are looking at one specific dot point, but we're going to remind ourselves of some cellular information before that. So, all living things possess a set of general characteristics that make them pretty similar, right? So, while all organisms may fall into really drastically different kingdoms, you know, you're talking animals versus bacteria, we still have requirements that need to be met in order to survive. So, all living things require nutrition, so something, you know, to ensure that we have molecules entering our system that we can reuse and break down and build into other things. Metabolism is common and involves all the chemical processes that actually break those molecules up and then build them back into new ones. Growth is something that not only ensures that we're growing really large, but also ensure that we can manage to repair cells or tissues if they're damaged. We have to be able to respond to stimuli, and that might mean that we're talking about external stimuli, so light, nutrient availability, space, but also internal stimuli, so low blood sugar, infection, body temperature changes, all those kinds of things. Excretion is common, and we're not just talking about the removal of wastes from a systemic point of view, like urine and feces, but we're talking um, cellular waste as well. Homeostasis is the ability for us as organisms to maintain an internal or stable internal body uh, environment, regardless of what's going on around us or within us. And reproduction ensures that our genetic traits and our characteristics um, and species carry on into the future. So to talk about organisms and life, we have to talk about cells first. And we talk about cell theory. And cells are the basic building block of all living organisms. They're the smallest unit of life. Now, cell theory, there's many versions of this around, but it states that all living things are made of cells, that cells arise from pre-existing cells, and that the activities of the organism is the sum of the activities of all the individual cells or in independent cell units. Now, stemming from these ideas which make up the cell theory, um, others arose, so more specific ideas once further research into cells was done. So, cells actually divide to multiply, which mathematically sounds really quite confusing. They use energy for growth and repair, they can't do all of the tasks they need to do without energy, and the activities at a cellular level contribute to the physiological processes, so the systemic processes that are going on. Now, while a whole organism has basic requirements, the cells themselves have specific needs for their survival as well. So water is definitely one. It's present in the cytoplasm and in the extracellular fluid around the cells. Oxygen is absolutely necessary for cellular respiration to create energy. Carbon dioxide is a waste product of cellular respiration, but it's actually useful for photosynthesis for those types of organisms, photosynthetic organisms. In organic minerals, we might be talking about things like nitrogen, which we use in our DNA, uh, in our proteins. We might be talking about things like phosphorus, which is again in our, in our DNA synthesis, an important part of our cell membrane. Um, iron, which is part of our red blood cells to carry oxygen and, and carbon dioxide around. Or you might be talking about magnesium, which is a component of chlorophyll in those photosynthetic organisms. They also need organic molecules. Now these are pretty important and we'll be talking more about them later on, but we're talking carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids and vitamins as well. There's obviously a need for energy and that energy might be light energy or it might be chemical energy and there's also a need to be able to remove waste, so cellular waste or systemic waste. Now cells do specialised jobs, okay? They can be default or they can be specialised. And when they're specialised, they contain specific organelles or smaller little organs inside them to help them meet their needs so that they can function. Their structure entirely depends on their function and that's a basic principle of biology. So the cell contents will vary greatly depending on the cell type. Now the genes in the nucleus, in the DNA of the cell will dictate what molecules are produced um, and which organelles are, are produced and in what quantities. So here we've got some red blood cells and some other things we'll have a look at in a minute. A typical cell will have structural components, organelles, information, usually in the form of DNA or RNA, and also active genes as a part of that information. Blood cells are the exception to the DNA carrying rule. Once they are mature, they no longer have space in order to carry DNA because they have to carry so much of the hemoglobin protein which can carry the blood gases around. Onion root tips, so plants have really clear cell walls that animal cells might not, and they appear like a really structured Lego brick or uh, brick wall situation under the microscope. They have chloroplasts, so they often appear quite green. Sperm cells have that specific tail for motility, so they can swim around. Uh, chloroplasts are plenty here in the moss. Cheek epithelial cells are rounded, not like that structural um, integrity that plant cells have. These are seminiferous tubules in the testicles where they mature sperm. 
These are stomata. These are specialized cells allowing for gas to enter and exit the leaf. Our neurons have long extensions to pick up and send nerve signals. Striated muscle have all these uh, mitochondria in um, their cells so they can make lots and lots of energy. Lots of uh, nice plant cell um, organizations, basically. And our small intestines, they have a need for absorption, so they have plenty of surface area in both the cells themselves and the way they link together in the tissues so they can do that absorption. Now, single cellular organisms carry out the seven functions of life on their own, but the multicellular organisms, um, you know, they fuse all these cells together and these cells rely on each other to perform roles to allow the organism as a whole to carry out the functions of life. So again, a recap on some cell things and one particular dot point this time.